I discovered what will give you the biggest gains, APR or APY. And believe me when I tell you that the answer will shock you. Let's find out. So welcome back to the channel. I am Scoriox, where I do the maths and you do that sweet degen. And as always, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. And please always do your own research. So with all of that out of the way, let's jump straight into it. What do APR and APY stand for? So AP, APR stands for annual percentage rate and APY stands for annual percentage yield. And that is really, really only one big difference between the two. Annual percentage rate is only counted for your initial deposit and any deposit after that. Whereas annual percentage yield typically vests any rewards and gives you rewards on top of those rewards, okay? So if you had $1 and you put it into a staking protocol, then you might get a percentage base on that, on that dollar every day, month, year, whatever, okay? And then that would just be what it is. Your $1 is earning money and those rewards, whether it's $1, $5, whatever, don't earn anything. Even if they're locked, unlocked, whatever, they earn nothing until you actually deposit them like you did with that first dollar. Now, annual percentage yield typically means that anything you claim gets vested automatically, all right? Until you pull it out, if it's locked, you probably cannot, like with Alluvium. But until you pull it out, it also generates rewards. So you put in $1 and then you earn another dollar, say after a couple months or whatever, both those dollars are now earning on top of that based on the percentages and things like that. And I know you guys want to see the maths on this and I have done it. It's really, really interesting. All right. Even I didn't expect to get the results I did. If you guys want to see more really educational content like this, please subscribe down below. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to hit the like so more people can learn about crypto and get involved in the space. I really do appreciate it. So let me take a look at this for you. Here we are with a few scenarios, and I've got this last scenario on the right, which shows some differences. But let's put it simply. The top scenario is APY, and the bottom scenario is APR. I know it can look a little bit confusing, but let me just break it down for you guys. So I've set up two users with an initial investment, right? And they both start off with the same amount of money um, in this first scenario. They both start off with $2,000, and there's $500 being distributed each month. And the APY and everything has been calculated based off that. You're just gonna to have to trust me on that one. It's so high because APY is yearly and um, yeah, and things like that, right? So basically, as you can see in this, in both scenarios, they both end up with the exact same outcome. They both end up with $2,914 at the end and the amount distributed was split evenly between the two. The big difference between these is the yield. The yield drops significantly faster on the APY. That's because everything that they're earning is being distributed evenly, which means that even though that stuff is also vesting, it's also diluting the pool and dropping that percentage yield. That is the really key takeaway here, is that the percentage yield will drop the more vests there are. Because as soon as people add money to this pool, the rewards have to be distributed even further, even though it's the same amount being distributed. In this case, it started off as 500, and then it started to drop. And that drop didn't change. That drop is the same on both of them, but the percentage changed because the pool got larger. It got more money in it, and therefore the wealth had to be distributed accordingly. Okay? So let's have a look at scenario two. I followed up with a very, very similar setup. Wait, let me go a bit more across. I followed with a very, very similar setup, but I started off one person with a lot less money than the other. And what happened? As you'd expect, nothing changed. All right? So obviously their dollar amounts are the same here, but what's most important is the percentage of the pool. So in this case, user one had 25% of the pool to begin with, and user two had 75%. And in both cases, under the exact same circumstances, being $4,000 total starting in the pool, they ended up with the same distribution. Obviously user two ended up with more money overall and earned more, 
but that's because they started off with more as well. But the distribution didn't change. All right, I hope that makes sense, guys. I know it's a bit confusing, but I do have one last scenario which does show a difference. So up until now, if you all start on an even playing field, essentially you end on an even playing field. That's just how it works. All right, so this last one is what's most important. Scenario three, all right? So I'm just gonna zoom in on this one here. All right, this one's really, really interesting. In this scenario, I added in a, thir a third person, but if I put them at the start, my result would not have been any different to before. Remembering that if they start on the same playing field, they ended on the same playing field. However, the big difference I did do was I started them on month two instead. Now the starting pool yield, I've based off all their initial investments. I haven't based it off their investments at that time when they entered. So that is something to consider. But going off of this, one of them lost a lot more percentage distribution of the pool than the other one. And that was the one in the APY pool, all right? You'll notice that a percentage yield dropped really fast in the first scenario and dropped really slowly in the APR scenario, the second one. That is because time inside the protocol for APY is most beneficial overall. All right, I hope that makes sense. So you can see that user three started off at 9% in both situations. They ended up at 8% in APY, APR they ended up at 6% in APY. And you'll notice that that 6% would drop even further the more months go on. So what am I trying to tell you guys here? If you're looking to get involved with APR or APY, a lot of, a lot of companies and things do a hybrid of the two. If you're looking to get involved, just know this. If you're getting in really early in a project, APY is really, really powerful. That is where you're going to make your biggest gains. If you're entering a lot, a lot later in a project, let's say six to 12 months after it's launched, but it's still got pretty good yield, so you're considering it, APR is where you're going to have the best bet because the yield percentage is going to stay the highest for longer. That is the big thing here with APY, the yield percentage can get crushed really quickly. And we've seen that with Illuvium. It took six months to go from like six, 800% down to 300%. And as soon as some tokens and things unlock, we could go even lower. So just know that APY makes the percentage yield drop really fast and APR does quite the opposite. It leaves the a percentage yield up quite high because anyone that wants to make a profit on that will have to invest money. Now you have the other side of this coin where as soon as people's APR rewards unlock, they can then deposit those rewards back into the protocol, diluting the staking protocol and giving them more rewards and other people slightly less, right? So that's another thing to consider. But until those thresholds are met, APR is typically a bit better if you're coming in in a later stage to something's development. So I hope that made sense for you guys. I hope you found that really useful. I really enjoyed making this video and giving you guys all these tips. Definitely check out my other content. I really do appreciate it. Have a good day, guys. I hope you guys learned something. Thanks for watching the video guys and don't forget to watch this next video down there in the bottom left hand. Wait. It's doing that thing again. Wait. It's happening again. Oh, crap. Ma, it happened again.